Vanessa, pick up shrimp special. Freshwater pond farming is showing promise in several areas in the southeast. Pond research at various land-grant universities is helping to lead the way for this developing industry. One of the leaders in this area is the aquaculture program at Kentucky State University here in Frankfort, Kentucky. Since Kentucky State University is a land-grant university and the United States is the world's largest market for shrimp, it was apparent we needed to investigate the possibilities of growing shrimp in farm ponds. Even though we in this country eat more shrimp than anyone else, there's very limited production in the United States. KSU is continuing extensive hands-on research and providing current information to shrimp farmers. The freshwater shrimp is also known as a giant prawn or the Malaysian river prawn, and it's native to the Indo-Pacific region. After a female has mated and her eggs have been laid and fertilized, she may produce 10,000 to 30,000 larvae, depending on her size. Newly hatched larvae must reach brackish water, that is salt water, of 10 to 14 parts per thousand within two days or they will not survive. In order to reach the post larva stage, the larva must undergo 11 molts for the shedding of its outer skeleton within about 30 days. Post larvae resemble adult prawns and are about 3 tenths to 4 tenths of an inch in length. They begin migrating into fresh water about one to two weeks following metamorphosis. As post larvae mature, they move into the juvenile stage and their bodies become a blue or brown color similar to adults. It takes anywhere from 95 to 284 juveniles to weigh one ounce. Broodstock prawns are collected during the fall harvest. They're kept in tanks with water at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the winter. The ratio of two to three males to 10 females is used. Hatchery and nursery procedures required to grow 30 to 60 day old freshwater shrimp juveniles for pond stocking are complex. These practices require considerable training, labor, and capital expense. That's why most farmers leave the hatchery and nursery phases to others and concentrate their efforts on the juvenile to adult grow out phase. So what should a farmer know before committing time and resources to shrimp farming? Let's go to Sean Coyle for information on pond preparation. In Kentucky, most farmers use levee-style ponds, which are typically one half acre in size. The depth should be between three and six feet, as circulation may be difficult in deeper ponds and may result in low oxygen on the pond bottom. Rectangular ponds with a two to one length to width ratio allow good water circulation. Although ponds may be almost any shape since they are drained and not sained at harvest. Shrimp are harvested from the pond by draining the water into a catch basin and then removing them with a small seine. The catch basin should be 18 to 24 inches below the pond bottom. Another method of harvesting shrimp is to capture the shrimp outside the pond as they wash through a pipe that runs through the levee. Harvest in very large ponds, sometimes found in Mississippi, can also be done with the seine net without draining the ponds. This approach is relatively new and doesn't always capture significant numbers of prawns. Careful pond preparation is vital for producing a good crop of shrimp. Farmers need to be careful not to introduce unwanted fish species or aquatic insects as well as pathogens into the pond, all of which may prey on newly stocked juvenile shrimp. Rainwater runoff and well water are the safest sources of water. If these sources are unavailable to you, make sure you filter water that's pumped from streams or rivers or lakes. This helps to exclude and keep out unwanted fish species and aquatic insects. A saran sock does a good job for filtering. Well water sources that provide a minimum of 45 gallons per minute or greater per surface acre can fill or flush a pond rapidly. Watershed ponds less than 8 feet deep may be used if fish and aquatic insects are eliminated before stocking the juvenile prawn. Fish may be removed by applying a 5% rotenone solution at 3 pints per acre foot when water temperatures reach 59 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But make sure you wait 2 to 4 weeks for the rotenone to break down before stocking the juvenile shrimp. The water in most prawn ponds is kept mixed by continuous or nightly aeration or circulation devices. Without adequate water circulation, much of the bottom habitat available to prawns could be unsuitable due to low temperatures and the absence of dissolved oxygen. You must have 220 or 110 volts of electricity to run the aerators. It's best to place the aerator or circulation device about six feet from the bank midway along the longest pond levee. If you're using substrate, the aerator will be positioned at the middle of the shortest levee 
so the current will flow into the vertical rows of substrate. At this point, you may be asking yourself, what is substrate? Well, good question. Plastic high visibility barrier fencing is a substrate that provides another layer or foundation for the shrimp to cling to. These vertical rows of fencing or substrate are anchored to posts. Why use substrate? That may be your next question. Research at Kentucky State University has shown that the addition of substrate can allow more juveniles to be stocked, increasing pond yields by 20 to 40 percent. Remember, increased water aeration or circulation will be required to compensate for the added substrate and additional prawns. Other important preseason pond preparations also need to be done. Agricultural limestone should be applied to ponds if the water contains less than 40 parts per million total alkalinity. This is usually done in the late fall or winter to give the limestone adequate time to dissolve and interact with the pond muds. The finest, most highly pulverized agricultural limestone should be used. If the calcium hardness is less than the pond water's alkalinity, calcium should be added in the form of either calcium chloride or gypsum, which is calcium sulfate. Please contact your local county agent or aquaculture biologist to get a calcium hardness measurement of your water and help in calculating the amount of gypsum or calcium chloride that might be needed. Another important preseason pond preparation procedure is adding alfalfa and soybean meal one to two weeks before stocking the prawn juveniles. Apply 250 pounds per acre of alfalfa meal and 100 pounds per acre of soybean meal. This will add vital nutrients for the prawns and will help to stabilize the pond's pH. A dissolved oxygen or DO meter should be used to monitor oxygen levels in the afternoon and especially early morning. Dissolved oxygen or DO should not be allowed to drop below three parts per million at any time in the pond. Low DO may cause the prawns to congregate around the pond's edge, especially during early morning. This can increase their vulnerability to predation. Keep in mind, many water birds are looking for a free lunch but are protected by federal laws. When considering water quality, there are a few other things to check. Ammonia can build up in the pond, especially with high feeding rates. Unionized ammonia is, is controlled by total ammonia, pH, and temperature of the water. Unionized ammonia should be kept to less than one-tenth of a part per million in prawn ponds. While total hardness and alkalinity of the water need to be greater than 40 parts per million, it's very rare to have values that are too high. And the final point is the pH of the water. pH increases during the day. Optimum pH for prawns is in the range of 7.0 to 8.5. pHs in excess of 9.5 may be lethal, and we have experienced problems with high pHs in our production ponds. There's been some recent success controlling pH with the addition of sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, at a rate of about 100 pounds per surface acre and repeat it as necessary until the pH is under control. Costs can range from as much as $10 to $37 for a 50 pound bag, so shop around for your best deal. I think the biggest challenge has been water quality. Having to learn to do water quality, uh, nitrite, keeping pH tested. Uh, one of our ponds, the nitrite got up in it and uh, we had to put untreated salt in there. The salt absorbed into the shrimp's skin and protected them from a brown blood disease that they can get. Also, you need to keep a check on the chloride once that happens to make sure the chloride is high enough to help protect the shrimp. The cost to stock a one acre pond with 16,000 juvenile prawns is approximately $1,600. This may not, but should, include packaging and or transportation. Most farmers choose to stock juveniles that have been nursed for 30 to 60 days rather than cheaper and smaller post larvae. Using nurse juveniles increases survival and increases total yields. Size grading juveniles into separate weight classes prior to pond stocking has been shown to increase total yields and reduce the number of smaller prawns which have less value. A small box grader like this with appropriately spaced bars can be used to separate prawns into various size groups. The optimum water temperatures for growing prawns range from about 84 to about 88 degrees Fahrenheit. However, they can survive water temperatures between 57 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit. When stocking, juveniles must be temperature acclimated from the transport water to that of the receiving pond. If juveniles are transported in plastic bags containing oxygen, the bags should be floated in the pond for five to 10 minutes during periods of low sunlight. After five minutes, an equal amount of pond water is added to the bags to allow the shrimp to adapt to the pond's water quality. 
Juveniles can also be transported in trucks equipped with hauling tanks. The pond water should be added to the tank slowly to equalize temperatures prior to release. Juveniles should be stocked as soon as water temperatures are at least 68 degrees Fahrenheit and warming. Stock as early as possible so that a one to one and a half ounce prawn can be obtained by late summer or the first few weeks of fall. Prawns are bottom feeders. They find their food mainly by smell, taste, feel, rather than eyesight. After stocking, the first 30 to 40 days, prawns feed mainly on natural foods, worms, snails, plankton, and detritus. Choose a sinking feed that contains ingredients with a lot of taste, such as fish meals and oil. Because prawns are very slow eaters, feeding more or less continuously, most Kentucky growers feed twice daily. Unlike fish, prawns are territorial and do not swim great distances to get their food. As a result of this behavior, it is important to uniformly distribute the feed over the entire pond area. For small ponds, less than one half acre, or where labor is relatively inexpensive, feeding is done by hand. In larger ponds, feeds are offered by the use of boats or feed blowers. Feed prices range from $150 to $750 per ton. Because prawns are grazers and can't consume their daily food allowance quickly, pellet stability is also important as they become more nutritionally dependent on the prepared foods. Marine shrimp diets are manufactured through an extrusion process that increases pellet stability up to several hours. The type of feed used is an economic decision that should be based on the level of production intensity. That is, the maximum pounds per acre desired. Okay, I usually check the oxygen a couple times during the night. And in the morning, between 6 and 7, I uh, load the feeder up and I, I feed both ponds. I recheck the oxygen again and uh, adjust the aerators accordingly. And I check the oxygen a couple more times in the morning. And between 2 and 3, we feed the shrimp again the second time. And uh, I'm just continually checking until sunset then, and we go around the clock again. Prawns are normally harvested between the middle and end of September, but always must be harvested before water temperatures reach 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which can cause mortality. Survival rates in production ponds vary from 60 to 80 percent. In Kentucky, total yields range from 800 pounds to 1,000 pounds per acre per year. If farmers follow suggested procedures and the weather's good. Research has shown the potential to dramatically increase or even double pond yields through the addition of artificial substrate. The harvest is a very critical time. Farmers must be careful not to needlessly lose healthy prawns. As we lower water levels in the pond the night before a planned harvest, this can be a very risky time. If we drain the water down too fast or water temperatures drop too low, prawns can become stranded on the bank and around the edges. Be sure to continue to run your aerators as water drawdown begins because oxygen stress on the animals can affect their product quality later. A small surface type agitator running in the deep part of the water in the catch basin is ideal. Four to eight purge tanks of clear, clean aerated water should be ready before the shrimp are removed from the pond. Two to three thousand gallons of water are needed for every thousand pounds of shrimp to be harvested. The prawns swim in the tanks, and this washes away the mud, debris, and bacteria. A review of prawn production results for the 2002 season in Kentucky revealed that higher yields were obtained in ponds that were built and managed using the following guideline. Built small, easy-to-manage ponds one half acre or less in size. Supply your pond with three horsepower of aeration per acre. Stock at least 20,000 prawn juveniles per acre use substrate, and feed an average of at least 50 pounds of feed per acre per day. Even though these recommendations maximize production and profits, farmers might also choose to use a low input approach to prawn production. If no source of electricity is available and there is no aeration, prawns can be stocked at densities lower than 10,000 per acre with feeding rates below 30 pounds per acre. With no aeration, however, there is a risk of low dissolved oxygen occurring and a possible loss of crop. There's a potential marketing problem that prong growers need to be aware of. 
Sometimes there develops a mushiness in the tail of the prawn caused by digestive enzymes that are located in the head of the prawn. To prevent this enzyme degradation as well as bacterial growth, prawns must be either kept alive or chilled. The best way to prevent mushiness is to quickly remove the head. To do this, grasp the head in one hand and the tail in the other, pull and twist. This does constitute processing and deheading facilities must meet FDA and local Department of Health guidelines. The processing facilities must have a food safety plan referred to as a HACCP plan or hazard analysis and critical control points. However, prawns sold live or whole on ice are not covered by HACCP regulations unless they're sold across state lines. Obviously, the decision of how and where the prawns should be marketed should be made before the harvest. This is because it affects the way the farmer will handle the prawns when they're taken out of the pond. Go on. If a decision is made to sell the shrimp live, they should be sold before cannibalism has a chance to take place in the holding facilities. Pickup or delivery should be scheduled at most one to two days after harvest. Tanks should be held at 70 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit and should be aerated. Artificial substrate should also be put in the tanks and kept about four inches apart. Prawns that are weak, soft-shelled, or molting should not be shipped. Uh, they'll most likely become a victim of cannibalism. This can account for as much as 10% of the harvested crop. Shrimp in this condition should be sold whole on ice, deheaded on ice, or cooked and consumed. We've touched on many areas that the shrimp farmer should evaluate before getting into sh freshwater shrimp production. Uh, first and foremost uh, should be the marketing aspects of selling the crop. We want to do this before the shrimp are actually harvested. This needs to be a first-hand consideration. I've got 450 pounds pre-sold that I've contracted with restaurants, uh, individuals, markets, retail markets, and then I will do some pond side sales after that. I'm also going to process so I will be able to hold product frozen and a lot of my markets would like to have a consistent supply so um, that's what I'm doing to date. Well in two weeks we're anticipating our first harvest here and I guess the the main thing is I'm wondering will the people actually come and buy and will I be able to get the brokers to come and buy. I have to send a couple hundred pound samples next week to some brokers and uh, will I actually be able to move 5,000 pounds of shrimp in uh, a couple weeks time because they are a perishable product and that's the big question right now. The traditional methods of advertising are good, radio advertisements, newspapers, word of mouth, but why not think of something bigger? One potential marketing route is transporting live prawns to big city markets. Large Asian populations found in some big cities often create a high demand for live aquaculture products. Getting prawns to market alive and in good condition is a new challenge being faced by the young prawn farming industry as well as the aquaculture research community. Hello everybody and welcome to Economics of Prawn Farming. Although prawn farming may be a small scale industry, there are significant costs. For example, to operate a one acre pond, it might cost anywhere from $1,600 to $5,000 per year. That figure includes the cost of juvenile prawns, feed, electricity, etc. Other costs include pond construction, which can range from $3,500 to $10,000. We assume that a one-acre pond typically costs $5,000 on average. Equipment costs are also significant. For example, a one-horsepower aerator, dissolved oxygen meter, a five-horsepower water pump, and a water quality test kit can cost up to $2,200.
what to expect in typical prawn farming. Most small-scale prawn farmers own their land and finance their costs. Startup costs include the cost of pond construction, equipment, and pond operations for the first year. It usually takes four months during summer for the juvenile prawns to reach market size. The current markets that are available include restaurants and direct consumer sales in the form of pond side sales and food festivals. Although wholesale markets exist for prawns, their prices are too low to make it profitable for the farmer. Three different technologies are currently being practiced. The first one is called low density stocking, where eight to 10,000 prawns per acre are stocked. Typical yields range from 200 to 400 pounds per acre in ponds that are not aerated and up to 800 pounds per acre in aerated ponds. Semi-intensive stocking doubles the stocking density to 16,000 per acre. Both technologies require a 32% protein sinking diet. Average yield from semi-intensive technology at, is at 800 pounds per acre with a maximum expected yield at 1,000 pounds per acre. Intensive stocking of 24,000 juveniles per acre is the third technology. This requires the use of artificial substrate in a pond which can cost up to $2,500 for a one acre pond. Intensive stocking requires feeding of a high protein shrimp diet for the last four to five weeks of growth. Expected yield of this technology ranges from 1,200 to 1,700 pounds per acre with a maximum at around 2,000 pounds per acre. If we assume that the farmer owns the land and equipment such as truck, mower, and feed storage facilities, and harvesting equipment is rented, it costs approximately $6,500 in fixed investment for the low density technology for a one acre pond. Similarly, we expect $7,300 of fixed investment for the semi-intensive technology and $9,800 for the intensive technology. Now we see these are certain break-even prices for these three different technologies for a one acre pond. For example, if a farmer purchases the juveniles for eight cents a head, the farmer needs to sell market size prawns at $6.86 a pound. If the farmer sells it at a higher price, then profit can be expected. Correspondingly, if the juvenile price increases to 10 cents a head and 12 cents a head, the farmer needs to sell whole prawn for $7.54 a pound or $8.21 a pound respectively. These figures assume that the average yield in the low intensity technology is about 260 pounds per acre. The corresponding figures for the semi-intensive technology, assuming a yield of 800 pounds per acre, are $4.30 break-even price per pound of whole prawn if the juveniles were priced at 8 cents a head. Otherwise, if the juveniles were 10 cents a head or 12 cents a head, the price, the break-even price increases to $4.74 a pound and up to $5.18 a pound. If we look at the break-even prices for the intensive technology, they are significantly lower than in the semi-intensive or the low-density technology. We see that if the juveniles cost only eight cents a head to the farmer, then the break-even price is as low as $3.69 a pound. These figures assume that the yield under the intensive technology is at 1,500 pounds per acre. In fact, if the yield is larger, such as 2,000 pounds per acre, we can expect the break-even price to drop significantly less. In fact, our figures indicate that it might be possible that these whole prawn could be sold in wholesale markets profitably in the near future. Finally, these are some conclusions that we have come up with based on observations of real-world commercial prawn farming. We found that a small change in juvenile prices can affect farm income tremendously. We also found that using the same technology, a smaller pond tend to be more productive than larger ponds. We found that if farmers are planning to sell a limited quantity of prawns to a small market, such as in pond bank sales, where only a few customers show up, the low density technology might be very suitable for them. However, if they were going to sell 
using a intensive technology, then they will end up a large quantity of prawns that can be a marketing nightmare. For these individuals, we are working on developing the intensive technology, improving its efficiency, so as to sufficiently lower the break-even price in order for these people to sell prawns in a wholesale setting for a profit. Thank you very much. Thank you for viewing this aquaculture videotape. We appreciate very much your interest in shrimp farming and encourage you to contact your local county extension office with any additional questions or concerns. Thank you.